are unknown. Villains such as thieves and robbers do not exist. The doors to every home may never be locked and bolted by day or night. These are the characteristics of an ideal world, the commonwealth state. So in that passage, like I said before, in your first box you have the text-based uh, sentences, and you guys need to look at that because we're gonna. I'm gonna read through them, and then you guys are gonna um, let me know what these mean to you. So what we have in the middle is your vocabulary words. So let me show you those up here. Okay, your vocabulary words. The first one is prevail, and that's to succeed. Want to write these down or? No, they're in the on the second in the second column. Look at your second column. The second one is maxims, a saying or a proverb. Do anybody know what a proverb is? What do we see proverbs from? From the Bible. From the Bible, right? Exactly. Materialism is greediness about stuff. Do you guys know about materialism? What is it? What do you know, Taiyi? Like materialistic things. Uh, like we see materialistic people, like they have like a couple of objects or an object or something of that matter that, mm-hmm. that they really want or that they really take care of or there, there is a way they will get, keep getting more of that kind of same object. Right. And then once somebody tries to take it away and they, they puff up in a big bug, then they try to find ways to get it back. Right. That's a perfect example. Displaces is to remove. And that just simply means just to remove something away from you. And then the third, the last one is one I like is idleness, not having anything to do. So we don't want to be idle at all, no time. We always want to have something to do. So I'm going to read through these, and we're going to move on to these questions. But what we're trying to do is to get you guys to understand is What is the overall theme of the passage of Confucianism? And that was the one that I just read to you guys. I want you guys to, from this text, I want you guys to tell me what these mean to you. So the first one is, when the perfect order prevails, the world is like a home shared by all. So your question is, what would the world be like if there was a perfect or if there was perfect order? So I need you guys, what does that mean to you in the text? Who can tell me? When the perfect order prevails, the world is like a home shared by all. What's a home shared by all? Everyone can visit their home. Okay. What what you say? There's peace. There's peace. Okay, I want you guys to look at the dependent question because it says, What would the world be like if there was perfect order? So in this sentence it says what? It's world peace. It'll be like the world shared by all. So what would it be like a world shared by all? If we all shared everything. Everybody would be in every country. I mean, different countries. Ethnic groups would be in different countries. Some countries more free to be living in any country. All right. That's a good one. So we need you guys to put that on your paper. Whatever you guys need, whatever it means. You know, if you want to write the questions, you can. If you don't, that's fine. Just write your answers. I just need to make sure you guys understand. There's two parts to one, though. So I need you guys to... Just take some time for number one, because I need you guys to tell me what does the author mean by perfect order? What's perfect order? Trust How do we get perfect order? Trust among all. Okay. What's perfect order in the classroom? Everybody Everyone. doing what they need to do, or what? Yeah. Everyone sitting, being quiet, watching, watching the teacher teach. Right. Answer questions. Janae, what's perfect order to you, honey? What's perfect order? in place? Okay, put, we need you guys to put that on your paper. If that's what you think I'll it means. Okay, all right. So everybody got number one? No. What does the author mean by perfect order? Okay. That's number one. That's one B. So there's two parts to number one. You guys ready for number two? Okay, the number two is virtuous and worthy men are elected to public office and capable posts of gainful employment in society. 
What's gainful employment? That's your question. What is gainful employment? What do you guys think gainful employment is? What about you, uh, Frank? What do you think gainful employment is? Okay, so in the, in the text it says virtuous and worthy men are elected to public office and capable men hold posts of gainful employment in society. So this asks what is gainful employment? So what's gainful employment? Is it public office? Is it our, is it our senators? Is it our president? Our Congress? What's gainful employment? What do you guys think? You said a president? Okay. Congress. Congress? Okay. You guys gotta write this down. Make sure you write this down on your paper. French, you got that on your paper? Now the second part was what kind of men are elected to public office? People over 35. People over 35. And what, what are those people? What public office is that for? The senators? Okay. Okay, what do you think, Maya? Are you still on number one? Okay, we gotta get Maya caught up with us. What about you? What do, what do you think, Tanisha? What kind of men are elected to public office? American citizens. Okay, anybody else? Curtis, what about you? Somebody with education. Okay, we are on number two, but we're on the second part of number two. So which part do you need? You need to go back? The first number two. What is gainful employment? Oh, what kind of men are I guess trustworthy men. I say trustworthy. Okay. And if you can't trust nobody that's in the office. Right. Okay, can the people in our public office be trusted? Do we trust them with our money? No. No. Because they might pull a George Bush. A George Bush, what you mean by a George Bush? Yeah. A George Bush spent up all our money on something that does not need to be spent on. Okay. Now Ms. Walker brought up a good point. In Chicago, Jesse Jackson Jr. was in public office and him and his wife spent the taxpayers' money on the things that they the well, it was the taxpayers, because we still pay into that. So the taxpayers' money went to furs and cars and decorating their homes and stuff like that. And do we trust those type of people? No. Okay, so we need trustworthy people in public office, right? Responsible and trustworthy people. Okay, but how does these things create an ideal world? That's the next question. How does these things create ideal worlds for us? If we have trustworthy men in public we office or women. Okay, we'll put that on your paper. That's a good ideal world. Oh, you did? Okay. Oh, we on number two? We still on number two. There's three parts to it, so I want you guys to oh, say that's, that's the third part you need to do? Yes. The third part is how would these things begin to create an ideal world? Ten Commandments? Okay. Ten Commandments is good. Fast 